Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video I will be painting a still life as you can see still life flowers with glass vase painted on an ampersand panel so this video I'll do the underpainting and then I'll do a follow-up video with the second painting stage so I'll walk you through the process tell you what paints I'm using etc um, if you do want to paint this, if you want to have a go and paint this, if you go to my website paulanthonybarker.com you can just download the photo and I'll put a list of the um, paints I've been using on there as well. If you're really interested about learning to paint I've got my own Patreon channel and you can pledge to support me and you'll get access to lots of videos with, um, with demonstrations on how to paint a portrait, how to paint pet portraits, other still life subjects and um, to all those people who subscribed thank you very much really appreciate that and um, if you haven't subscribed yet please do so so yep i'll take you through this video and um, then in the next video we can do the um, the second painting stage so um, thanks for watching and i will see you on the next video so just going to get the uh, background painted in just to bring the drawing forward and um, yep start on the rose there is kind of like a green tint to the rose so originally I was going to paint it the same color as the um, the reference photo but um, yeah I do change my mind and paint paint the rose yellow bit of artistic license so yeah, I'm taking my time just painting the rose in because there's so much detail on it. You could paint it a bit more impressionistically if you wanted to, but I was just going for a bit of realism. So I was trying not to lose the, the drawing underneath. So yeah, just trying to get my values right. Paints, titanium white, cadmium yellow pale, Windsor green, alizarin crimson, ivory black, ultramarine blue. So yeah, just getting the detail painted in on, on the rose. Just taking my time. Yeah, what I decided to do there was just um, pre-mix a few, few colours, just to um, because it was so um, there's so much detail in the rose. I just wanted to concentrate more on just um, painting the details in than having to keep thinking about which colour to mix up next. The brushes I'm using are just round brushes, so good for doing detail. The um, glass palette on the right, just at the top of that glass palette, I put some liquid up there, so I mixed some liquid into the paint as well, just to speed up the drying. Yeah, as you can see as well, I have changed the paints a little bit there. I've put the Windsor Red on instead of the Alizarin Crimson. So I do chop and change a little bit. Very easy way to mix greens. Get a, um, a bright yellow. I think um, I was quite low on the cadmium yellow pale, so I just used some cadmium yellow lemon, which was even more kind of um, a lighter yellow. So that's perfect. Mix that with some ivory black. Ivory black's a very low chroma blue. So if you mix um, obviously yellow in blue you get green so you can mix the green up with those two colours but then you can adjust the green with the Windsor green or a phthalo green which is very strong so you can increase uh, in intensify the greenness as you need to and yeah just working the anti rhinum there the flowers on the anti are, um it's that kind of grey mix at the bottom I'm using for the flowers and 
Yeah, done a few green steps as well. Yeah, so the colours I've brought in there are Daxacine Purple and Magenta, just to do the edges of the carnation. What I decided to do as well was I, want, I decided to just paint the, the petals in the next day on the carnation because that dioxin purple is so strong that it would really get in the white paint. Um, so I, I did that over a couple of days. So yeah, just following the drawing round. And getting a lot purpley colour painted in. And um, yep, now on to the stems of the flowers. Yeah, continued just doing, decided just to keep doing the the steps from uh, dark to light on, on the colours just to make it easier while I was doing the underpainting. Gives you a bit less to think about. So just finding all of the green areas in the, um, the glass vars and just painting those in. The reflections. making sure I'm painting in the distortions that you can see through the glass and the water. And there's a couple of leaves underneath the rose, so I'm going to paint those in. Yeah, and the uh, the greens I just used, and I just kind of put them to the side of the palette, just in case I needed to use use some green again. And uh, then I mixed up the colour steps for the glass jar, sorry, the glass vase. And obviously remembering that you can see the, the back panel through the, the glass, but with the water and the glass and the light coming down, it makes the, the area in, inside the vase look lighter. So just keep working my way around, looking at all the, um, looking at the reference photo, and um, trying to pick up all those um, changes in colour and value.
yeah, I think if you do, I'd encourage you to go to my website and download the, the, uh, the photo and have a go at painting it. Because you see in the middle of the vase there is um, a heart shape. So it would be a really good learning experience to paint uh, something like this in with all the detail. And there's like a, a, a sun kind of shape in the, the middle there of the, uh, the heart. So I'm just painting that in. Just finding all the um, the different values of the paint there. This more of a grey kind of coloured paint, and uh, yeah, just doing the lights and the darks. And hopefully, when you step back and have a look, it'll look more three D. Yeah, so um, moving on to this next stage, I started to paint the, um, the yellow on, on the rose to start the second painting stage, but I kind of um, was losing the drawing and I wasn't happy with it, so I decided just to, some of the yellow paint had started drying, so, um, or had dried. Um, I wiped the paint off of off the top part of it that was still wet but on the side it dried so I decided just to go over it again and do paint it in black and white a grisai painting and then just to make sure I keep the drawing and take my time a little bit and then go over it again in yellow afterwards so sometimes when you do paintings you do have some things you're not happy with or you have to resolve some issues. So for me, the rose, because the petals are so subtle, and um, yeah, I just wasn't happy with the way it was looking and I was losing some of the drawing, like I said, so I decided to um, repaint it. So I'll paint it in black and white and then I'll go over the rest of the painting and then I'll come back and um, paint the yellow on the rose but that's in the second painting um, in the next video. Yeah so just really taking my time to get the, uh, the petals painted in properly. Yeah, 
Yep, so that's the underpainting stage complete. So, um, yep, thanks for watching this and um, I'll see you on the next video when we do the second painting stage.